Oh, I do apologize. Am I disturbing you? No, please. Do come in, Mrs. My name is Miss Alice de Bouvier. I'm Mr. Holmes' new neighbor. Oh, I didn't have the pleasure to... Uh, I am Dr. John Watson. Could we provide you with any assistance? Oh, she is not the concern, Watson. I'm... <laughs> then, what is this about? Oh, that child standing sniffling behind her. Get rid of him, Watson. But he is shivering with cold. And he is upset. What happened to him? Little Tom knocked at the wrong door. Oh, crying out loud. Oh, boy, come in. Warm yourself by the fire. Can I offer you a cup of tea, Mr. Bouvier? Well, I... It is not as though we are disturbing you-know-who. Are we? I suppose not. Since you are our new neighbor, it is perhaps better that you know what he's like. You're starting to worry me. Well, Mr. Holmes is relapsing. His illness that he has seizes him when he finds himself with nothing to do. He becomes completely asocial. And alas, this is a very difficult, medically incurable case. Now this must stay between us. Of course, I understand. How very sad. But there is a cure, if only a temporary one. A thrilling inquiry. Most certainly. If he refuses this one, then his condition will worsen. Oh, I am still here, you know. I didn't fall out of the window. Very well, then. Thank you, miss. Now tell me, boy, what brings you here? It's... It's my father, sir. He's missing. I... I don't know what to do. Missing, eh? And what do the police say? Obviously. Your clothes are well mended and you can read. Your parents may be poor, but you are loved. Yeah, well... It's just the two of us now. My mother died when I was a little one. And that's just one more reason for not leaving you. Your father doesn't seem the irresponsible type. He's very good to you. Well, that's right. But he has no fixed work, so he often takes odd jobs for the day. Because that's all he can find. Only this time, he didn't come home. And when was the last time you saw him? Three weeks ago. He left for a new job. But this time, he was acting a bit strange and angry. Strange? In what way? He said to me, Son, I'm out on a special job. Don't you dare move from here. I think something went wrong. Three weeks? That's a long time. What do you mean, sir? Uh, nothing. I was digressing. What's his name? George Hurst, sir. Very well. Your address, please, Tom. 12 Dorset Street. The first floor, door E. It's in Whitechapel, sir. I ain't got no money to pay. Who asked for money, Tom? Your case seems to be the very medicine I need. I'll meet you there shortly. Oh, thank you, sir. Good day, Mr. Holmes. Well, if it isn't young Wiggins. And I see you found yourself a job. If you can call it that. I hate it. But if, if you've got any proper work for me. I just might be in need of your assistance later. Wait here. The man who's offering that special job has a proper set of mutton chop whiskers. Labor law sent your kids to school instead of the coal mine. He's offering the special jobs. He never drinks alcohol. So, the man I'm looking for has whiskers and never drinks alcohol. See that gentleman? I need you to follow him and report back to me. All right, Mr. Holmes.
They won't let me pass. I'll need to find another way. Coat of arms. It might help Mr. Holmes. I'll make a drawing of it. Wiggins' tale was quite unusual. What do you make of what he found, Holmes? So this man could be Lord Marsh. Huh. A lord who hangs around in a public house. Let's pay a visit to Lord Marsh. We'll pretend that we're interested in his charitable activities. Mr. Holmes, you have a visitor. Oh, just ask him to wait. I'm afraid that won't be possible. This young lady refuses to wait for anything. What? Father! Caitlin! <laughs> Miss Caitlin's boarding school was flooded. Everyone was sent home. As if it could smell any mustier. <laughs> My word, how is it possible that you have grown up so fast? You'll be staying. Wherever will we put you? Holmes, I'll give her my room, of course. What do you have to say, Kate? You're on a new case. A respectable lady who's being blackmailed? Or is it a love story between a prince and a suffragist? However did you guess? You will tell me, won't you, Father? But you'll make Watson jealous. All right, then. Have fun. I'll go and unpack. Will you help me, Mrs. Hudson? Holmes, about Caitlin. Yes? She has grown up, hasn't she? Don't you think it's time to... to tell her? To tell her what, Watson? Well, about her father. Never. Absolutely never. Do you hear me? Holmes, you were responsible for the death of her father. You owe her the truth. She is old enough now. I would lose her. Can't you see that? She must never know, Watson. Is that clear? Holmes. It won't and can't happen. Good day, gentlemen. Welcome to my home. How may I help you? Good day to you, Lord Marsh. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. I hope we're not disturbing you. You are with your physician? Yes, this is Dr. Reuben Fisher. But no, please, I'm intrigued by your visit, Mr. Holmes. I'm glad to hear it. The last thing I'd wish is to upset the patient. Lord Marsh, can I just say that I admire all of your efforts in assisting the poor of London? Ah, uh, yes. It is a war that we must fight on our streets and now, too, from my home. You must surely have noticed those bags full of items, clothing and books for the unfortunate. That is inspirational. Um, at my own humble level, I, too, try my best to support those in need. I thought perhaps that I could be of some assistance? I don't see why not. I already have the valuable assistance of Dr. Fisher, who happens to be my personal physician. It's curious. Your face seems familiar to me, Doctor. Oddly, I'm associating it with Whitechapel? Well done. You are right. I do occasionally frequent a few hostelries over there, would you believe it? <laughs> Not that I am a drinker. But there, dressed as a working man, I can approach the other fellows to see if they might be interested in a special job. A special job? May I ask what you're referring to? Certainly. Since Lord Marsh began his special education program in 1889, he foresaw that such people would need an occupation of some kind. And so, with or without education, we propose these opportunities to work with Lord Marsh. It offers the less fortunate a chance to help make London a better place. That's remarkable. Yes, indeed. In order to truly see, one requires vision, yes? But also insight. And Lord Marsh has believed this since he was a child. Oh, Oh, Dr. Fisher makes it all sound so romantic. Let's close this topic. Forgive me, Lord Marsh, you're looking very pale. Might I offer Dr. Watson's assistance? That is kind of you, but I feel confident that I can provide Lord Marsh with the care that he requires. In that case, why are you taking such powerful painkillers? Excuse me, what do you mean? Mr. Holmes is referring to the pills on your table. I'm sorry, but that's a medical confidentiality. 
Lord Marsh, hunting with his friends. Ah, my dear comrades, Lord Collins and Lord Harrington. If it wasn't for this godforsaken English malady, I'd be with those rapscallions right now. All in due time, my lord. I can't quite work it out. Do you have any idea as to the number of people who might owe you their lives? Oh, don't embarrass me, Mr. Holmes. But indeed, these people have become like a family to me. That would be a fairly large family, I imagine. <laughs> yes, the, the list would be longer than any of your short stories. As for how large, well, Fisher is the one who keeps record. Might we take a glance at the list? I regret that is impossible. It is confidential. I stand firm upon that point, Mr. Holmes. I quite understand. We'll most certainly send a donation towards your educational program. I shall take my leave then. I thank you both and I wish you all the very best, gentlemen. Likewise, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes? Do you have any news about my father? Tom, Tom, not so fast. I wanted to ask you if you remember your father mentioning anything about a special education program. An education program? No, he only talked about a special job. What's this box, Tom? Oh, yeah. I just found it, Mr. Holmes. It was ever so well hidden. I've no idea why. Well done, my boy. It could prove very helpful. Holmes, what are you doing here? What are you planning? A mission of my own. You must play the role of the conscientious doctor while I sneak inside Marsh's house. That's the only way of helping little Tom. How can I help you? I came to visit Lord Marsh. What for? I would very much like to see Lord Marsh, if you please. Oh, you're so clumsy. Can you please not... I have to visit Lord Marsh and offer him my services. Fisher, please allow Dr. Watson to enter. Doctor, it appears that you were impatient to pay me another visit. Indeed. Will you allow me to examine you? A second opinion, so that the great Lord Marsh does not become the late Lord Marsh. Oh, well, since you put it that way, very well. Shall I retire to your office, Lord Marsh? No, please, Doctor. I insist that you stay. I shall need your assistance. Will you break anything else? I'll try my best. Hmm, I'd suggest that your current weakness is perhaps more than a simple case of influenza, Lord Marsh. <coughs> Where might your companion be, Dr. Watson? Oh, he's busy poking his nose into other people's business, I'm sure. <clears throat> My lord, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I must remind you about your meeting. Is it already time? My apologies, Dr. Watson, but we are expected elsewhere. Might we offer you a lift? You are going out? I'm not sure that's wise in your condition. I value your opinion, but misery never rests and I am needed. Well, do please take good care of yourself, Lord Marsh. I'll send you my diagnosis, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Watson. Farewell. Mycobacterium. It appears that Lord Marsh is seriously ill. Holmes, this is no longer a laughing matter. It is just as I feared Lord Marsh is suffering from tuberculosis. You don't say. Yes, I do say. And Holmes, he will die if he is not transferred to a sanatorium as soon as possible. And yet both Lord Marsh and Dr. Fisher are doing their best to hide this fact. How interesting. But why? Why indeed, Watson. Oh, but... Oh, dear God. You don't think that Lord Marsh contracted tuberculosis while aiding the poor? How terrible. I have a commitment that I can't possibly cancel. Holmes, during my absence, please be extremely careful. This disease is highly contagious. 
And remember that we have women at home. Thank you, Miss Alice. Until later. I'll see you soon, Caitlin. Where have you been? Our neighbor lent me a book. She is so kind. I think she likes you. <laughs> I doubt that. How is your investigation going? It's going. Dracula? Yes. It's forbidden reading at my boarding school. Did you know? Well, well. Here it is. Drat. I'll need to hurry if I want to find out what's going on at the forest. Father, that boy Wiggins, does he come here very often? He helps occasionally in some of my cases. Why do you ask? I'd like to talk to him. Talk to him? Father, back at school there are only girls to talk to, and they are so boring. I'm sure Wiggins has lots of exciting stories to tell about his life in London. It would be so romantic. Romantic? Whatever that might be. Sometimes I wonder what world you live in, Father. Oh, Kate. I'll leave you alone now. <laughs> Breathe, Lord Marsh. It's almost over. Who are you? George Erst from the First Lovett Scouts, here to deliver justice. <laughs> <laughs> An old soldier. How ironic. Did we refuse you on our special education program? It's true, I was refused. An old wounded soldier is useless to you. But he can still be dangerous. We hunted a lot in these woods, but I didn't expect to become the prey. I have lived a grand life without any limits set by others. I will die a happy man, so you won't see me begging you festery wretch. <laughs> <laughs> worthy opponent Tom my Tom if you've endangered my lad in any way you will pay dearly I assure you that Tom is safe in London with a well-trusted friend and now it's time to end this by all means listen to me if you're seeking an apt punishment and vengeance killing Marsh will give him exactly what he wants he would die knowing that he had fulfilled his life through his absolute control of it but if you allow Marsh to live he will suffer a far greater punishment. For his ball and chain will be the debilitating tuberculosis. Look, it's already dragging him painfully and slowly to his death. Then his wealth can and will be used to support the families affected by the Quartermain Club's malevolence. You're mad! You're both mad! Let's go and find Tom. Not just yet. See, Lord Marsh, you will die here, although not by the gun. You'll die slowly. Don't do this, George. Detective, take a look here. This is how you became sick, Lord Marsh. The beheading of your victims who were suffering from tuberculosis was what infected you. Poetic justice. Holmes, you cannot fully understand why we helped so many and sacrificed a few. But don't let me die like this. Just kill me now. I understand your view, Mr. Hurst. I really do, but I couldn't allow you to continue. 